everybody, welcome. Uh, this is Dale Wills here, and uh, we're going to show you a nice new boat in North Palm Beach. Uh, one of the, the builders here uh, really needs no introduction, and um, I've got the privilege of uh, introducing a, a, a good good boating friend of mine and a, and a hell of a boat builder and one of the first families in uh, sport fishing. So, Michael Rybovich, welcome. Dale, it's good to see you. Tell us a little bit about some of the specs of this boat that we're on right now. This is a 78 foot sport fish uh, that we uh, delivered uh, last June and uh, she's powered by a pair of uh, M96L MTUs at uh, V16s at 2600 horse apiece. Uh, got a pair of 29KW Onans in her. Uh, she's a good running boat. It's, uh, we've seen her up around 47 knots. Um, she's uh, just a good running, good riding boat. Uh, built this boat for a repeat customer of ours, a really fine gentleman who uh, has a lot of fun with these things and uh, knows what he wants. And uh, those are the, the best kind of guys to work for. About eight years ago, we did this same boat. So this boat built, this boat owner, he's one of your good customers. And uh, this is, how many boats has he built with you? Well, actually, he's built two, but he's owned three. Okay. And Dale, unfortunately, I think it's been a little longer than that. Uh, you don't look any worse, oh, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mike's going to walk us through this new boat and um, enjoy it. Here we go. What you've got here in the good ship persistence is um, pretty typical cockpit arrangement these days with the mezzanine up uh, behind the bulkhead and then large fish fighting cockpit aft. Um, you'll see in this particular boat, uh, we were fortunate enough uh, to go into the lumber yard and select quarter sawn teak. So it kind of sets this boat apart in that all the grain in here is matched quarter sawn teak. This is not faux finished. This is the real thing. And uh, it's uh, very, very uniform in grain pattern and color. And we're mighty proud of that. One of the other cool things about this mezzanine that you don't see on other boats is the handrail arrangement, which uh, we've kind of patterned that after uh, a piece of furniture in that it's got an open handrail. And then we took that open area underneath and routed out a slot and put boarding lights underneath there. So at night, it's, it's really a pretty sight with the light shining down on all that beautiful quarter sawn teak. We have uh, freezers up behind the mezzanine sofa and to starboard a drink box behind the jump seat. And what that does is allow us to move the engine room entrance forward. And a lot of times it's, uh, it's a pain in the ass to get in and out of the engine room in rough weather uh, pouring down rain or if you're filling the cockpit full of water when you're backing down hard. So we've moved the engine room entrance up behind the bulkhead. It's covered by the cockpit overhang and it just makes a nicer way to get in and out of the engine room. So adjacent to that are our freezers outboard on the port side and the drink box on the starboard side. Also have a dead man that's built into the step here uh, because the customer does an awful lot of tuna fishing in the summer months up north and that gives them the ability to attach, uh, come along to that and bring them straight through the tuna door. You can see that dead man's lined up, lined up with the tuna door. We got a big fish box aft here up against the transom and then your lazarette entrance in the center. It's becoming more and more common now to ditch the in-the-deck live wells and put the on-deck live wells uh, adjacent to the rocket launcher. So you'll see the supply and discharge fittings on either side of the lazarette hatch uh, that we supply with a live well pump box down in the lazarette. It makes it a lot more convenient to have the live wells up on deck and for people that are uh, maturing like myself uh, I don't have to bend over and, and try to get something out of a low hole in the deck anymore. One of the unique things about this boat is that because she's built for tuna fishing 
This is harpoon storage in here. And then we've got good storage area under here that can be utilized for anything. Mops, gaffs, tackle. Next we have uh, refrigeration for uh, his bait and bait trays in here. Over here we have dry storage, cleaning supplies, another set of tackle drawers here. We've moved the engine room entrance up here behind the bulkhead where it's protected. Also makes it real easy for the captain and mate to jump down on a trip through the hatch on the bridge, down the ladder, and straight into the engine room. Before we get to the engine room, we enter into the tackle room. So what we have here is the tackle room and everything they're going to be using in a, in a day of fishing. Heavy tackle is over here to starboard. This is pretty much your sailfish rig here. Tuna rig over there. And then on this side you have a workbench and a full set of tool drawers. And then from here we enter the engine room. First we go through the generator room here. And this you'll see a pair of 29KW Onans port and starboard. Up here in the stable where all the horses are, the 16-cylinder uh, 16V2000 M96Ls. MTUs. So what you've got on the aft bulkhead behind each engine is our electrical, our AC sub-panel for the engine room and all the equipment down here, and our DC sub-panel. That way, if you're working down here in the engine room or in the pump room, generator room, and you need to shut something on or off, you don't have to go back up through the boat to the main panel. The overhead is, is a product that's, that's produced by Sounddown. It, uh, it may appear uh, a little different than the shiny, fared out overheads that you see in a lot of boats these days, but this actually has acoustical properties to it in that the sound penetrates through these perforations and then there is an acoustical barrier on the other side of it in addition to the heavy whisper mat insulation above that. So we get a little more quiet out of an overhead like this. Now as we come forward in the engine room, you got fuel, forward fuel tank up here with an inspection plate to get to the pickups on each side in case we ever get something clogged up in there and we need to go inside the tank. There's a plate on either side. It's mounted at a length above the pickup where you can get your arm down to it. Sight gauge is here, uh, oil tank sight gauge down here, lube oil tank, and then this door is our escape hatch for safety in the front end of the engine room in case you ever need to exit and can't get out that way. And this will lead to two areas. You go straight through here and up that hatch and you go into the boat's main electrical room. If you go straight through here and turn the corner and through a hatch, it takes you through the entire forward bilge of the boat. So you have access from the engine room to your main electrical and the entire forward bilge. We were talking about uh, the engine room entrance being moved up behind the mezzanine sofa and jump seat. And what this does as well is create an alcove for us that allows us to have an entrance into the day head from the cockpit. So we have a day head to starboard here ahead of the drink box with an entrance from the cockpit so that in a day's fishing you don't need to go into the salon when nature calls. And then as we go into the salon there is another entrance into the day head that will double as a door to use to keep you out of having to go down below when you're up here entertaining. So you have two entrances into the day head and it works quite well. So the interior of the boat is uh, finished in all matched veneered teak. We spend an awful lot of time trying to match all this grain up along with the solid teak framing. And then just look up here you see first the lights go off so that they don't shine through on the boat next to you at night. And then we have our big screen that is in a perfect location for the bar stools and the sofa. And when you're done with it, it retracts into a flush overhead 
with nothing sticking down to clue you in that there's a television up there. When we were down in the engine room, we talked about a hatch that came up into the electrical room. So you'll see to port here, as you come through the companionway, this is the main electrical room, which includes straight outboard, the main DC panel, and then as you come inboard, you have your AV equipment mm -hmm. here, and your main AC panel here. Starboard side of the companionway, you're really kind of up against the side of the boat here in order to give us a big master stateroom. But there's plenty of storage here in these cedar line lockers for foul weather gear, flares, any kind of equipment you might want to stick in there. This could also have been uh, a large tackle area. Um, we try to encourage the customers to keep the tackle aft or on the bridge so you're not walking through all this very expensive joiner work with tackle in your hands, but some, some people would uh, prefer to have it locked inside, and this area could be a tackle area. Now behind these lattice doors, we have uh, a rice paper material that is actually rice paper uh, embedded in acrylic and it gives it a, a really warm look. And then behind there, of course, is storage for whatever you choose to put in there. We use this throughout the boat uh, if the customer would like it. It uh, allows us a place to have uh, effective indirect lighting and gives them more storage with a kind of a pretty accent. Walking down below to port is the master stateroom and master head and shower. Yeah, all this stuff originates in a lumber yard, and that's behind the master stateroom in between the master bunk, the forward fuel tank, so it creates another acoustic barrier ahead of the fuel tanks to make the master stateroom a quiet place to ride. As you come around the corner in the companionway is your washer-dryer setup, and we've got a lot of storage here as you come around in the companionway for your laundry supplies, vacuum cleaners, whatnot. More storage here in the upper companionway. One of the things that I really like about this arrangement that we worked with uh, the owner on is that uh, we maximize the room down here, but there are no upper bunks. And as we all get older, and still enjoy fishing um, and when as some of us get uh, a little larger it's harder to crawl into that upper bunk so what we've got are port and starboard twin staterooms you got new two nice twin berths in each stateroom with plenty of room between them starboard we've got the same thing another set of twin berths or the private head and shower large drawer for suitcases under the inboard bunk. And forward, we have the VIP stateroom, which is a full queen up here with plenty of room to get all the way around it. Nothing jammed up against a bulkhead to make the bunk hard to make up. We've, uh, on the past several boats, been installing these ocean air screens, and, and it, it's something that I really like. You can shut the AC down, open the hatches, and put the screen across. And we do that because we build our own four deck hatches, we're not using uh, someone else's manufactured aluminum cast hatch. Um, so that way we can work with a square or rectangular shape and the ocean air outfit and custom making these screens and, and blackout panels for us. Let's go up on the bridge, Dale, and we'll look around. Up here on the flying bridge is or 78 footer, there's quite a bit of room up here. Three helm seats and a raised platform that was required by the customer uh, to increase his visibility. We see in the general trending in the industry is for this helm console to get higher and higher with the advent of larger and larger screens uh, to the point where they become a phone booth up here uh, instead of a nice piece of well thought out furniture. So you'll see this low profile helm with the pop-up 
lid where the main three screens are that is completely adjustable height wise all the way up or anything in between even in the up position I still have plenty of visibility of the bow in the down position it cleans up the entire bridge and gets rid of that extru uh, obstruction and gives us a nice clean low profile look up here. Directly in front of me are all my engine displays and engine switching. In this particular boat, because it's an MTU boat, you'll see the MTU displays and switch panels and right smack in the middle the autopilot screen which is where I like it and uh, on this boat uh, Captain Tyler likes it there too. Keep it right out in front of you. And then to protect all this uh, whether in foul weather or whether you're in uh, washing down, then there is a glass panel that comes up on pneumatics, covers that all up. You can run that way. You can run with it open if you need access to the screens. And then we have kind of a unique way of hinging our little cubby holes, our glove boxes on either side of the helm in that we took the hinge out of the cambered surface to allow us to continue a nice pretty camber that mirrors the camber of the deck and then to hinge on a straight line we've moved the hinge up top here and then inside there you'll see on this particular boat a set of uh, switches for all your circuits up here radar controller here you have your FLIR joystick your night vision joystick uh, and a couple other controllers and trackballs here Drop down box with Tyler's two VHFs here and a Furuno repeater up there. We use a satin finish up here. I'm kind of partial to that and, and if, if I'm able to, I'll try to steer the customer towards that. And uh, what you'll find in any of these hard tops is that they're built on a mold. And as much as the tower boys do everything they can to try to build a fair mold and produce a fair part. Because of the concave surface up there, it tends to show every little imperfection when you paint in high gloss under there. It also creates a lot of glare. So what we do is this same old ancient trick of throwing flattening paste in the paint and give it a satin look. That cuts the glare down and makes it all look perfectly smooth. And back aft on this boat we have the addition of another drop-down box. It holds a Garmin screen. Tyler can pull up anything he wants to on this screen. While he's dragging baits he can keep an eye on things, keep an eye on the cockpit without having to turn around. And another cute trick that we did here that we actually uh, was a suggestion by Captain Bobby Brown on the last boat and that was give me a rudder angle indicator here so I know where my rudders are when I'm backing down. It's a cute trick. Um, what we had to do was take the rudder angle indicator and turn it upside down so that the needle corresponds to port and starboard correctly but I just think it's a really handy gimmick and uh, it's probably going to find its way onto a lot of our boats. That is our traditional double handrail. Uh, it scares some people as a maintenance item. We can build that painted out. We can build it in high gloss varnish and with today's clear coat finishes the maintenance of that is nothing like it used to be. Uh, it's much simpler. We can get two years out of that clear coat and avoid you uh, having two guys on a side doing that every six months. For traveling, he's got a lot more freezer capacity up here and he can also control each individual box with its individual thermostat so this can be either freezer or refrigerator drink box whichever he prefers. Thermostats are located in behind the sliding door. One of the cool things about this tower uh, we worked with Bosch American Towers on that, and Timmy and I go way back. On the last boat, we experimented with a couple attachment points by taking the bolts out of the flanges and using an internal welded round stock and a machine screw on the inside 
of whatever structure that's attached to. It works so well on the last boat that on this boat, I said, Tim, let's try that everywhere that tower touches the boat. So if you'll look at this boat, everywhere there's an attachment point, you will see no fastenings. And what we've got now is actually stronger than having four or five machine screws going through the side of the boat in that we've got a big solid piece of round stock going through a sleeve and then that's fastened internally. Even where the back rails fasten into the radius, you will see no screws there. It's a clean look and it's a stronger way of putting the tower on. You're not snagging your chamois on screw heads that somebody's bunged all up with a screwdriver. And so you'll see down near the base of each ladder on the tower is a courtesy light that will show you where that first step is as you're going up at night. I'd like to thank Dale and In The Bite for giving us an opportunity to show off our latest gal. We're awful proud of these things and uh, we've got the fourth generation taking over the construction of these things now. Another source of pride that we can continue this down the road for quite a while.